Good morning. Tuesday morning, first thing, uh, well yesterday I shot up to the water intake. So this thing that we made, a fair few videos back now. Uh, so water comes down here, comes across these metal grates and drops down into the box. And then we've got uh, a pipe fitting on the end here, um, which goes to the tank. So this is a, what we call gravity feed water intake. Uh, and then all the stones and stuff just run off run off the end. Uh, it's been working really well, but I noticed on my little Gallagher uh, water tank indicator thing that the level was going down. So all this had pulled off. <clears throat> I just I hadn't fixed it properly. Um, it had all pulled off and then blocked up with silk and stuff. So we've rectified that. I've got the camera lady. Yeah, otherwise you get a bit dizzy watching you. <laughs> we've rectified that. Uh, we're gonna put Dug, dug that down in, in the timber, put a metal plate over top, screw that down, countersunk bit uh, holes, so then yeah, nothing will catch on the bottom side. what was happening, I know you said it, but oh. it was sitting like that and everything would come was getting in under underneath there. it, yep. So, yep. You, so what did you say, countersunk it? Yeah. Put it in there, slam that down. That sits there, and then these will just stack on uh, down, down. I need, a, I need a new piece of this. But this is, this is just a prototype, essentially. We've proved the concept, so now I've just got to draw it up. Get a uh, friend of ours, local mechanic down the road. He's a bit of an engineering guru, so he's made boats, alloy boats and bits and pieces, so he says he's got a bit of this stuff, uh, or enough to make, make some of this out of um, some scrap that he's got. Snowy, leave the cat alone. Uh, yeah, so we'll get this back up and running until we get a bit of a design to him, and then he can, um, that's not ideal. Until he can, uh, yeah, get it get it made for us. We might try and make two. So one for the water intake for the stock and one for the new hut complex thing out the back that we're going to do. So the, it's essentially a sieve, isn't it? To sieve all the silt and rocks. Sieve all the stones out, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. But first I need to, before I put all that on, I need to clean all this out. Righto, prototype 2.0 finished. We've got our steel plate in there so nothing will get in the top. Yeah, should work pretty good. Just got to carry it up there and install it. But uh, first, go shift the light he'll use on the crop. And uh, yeah, a few other jobs to do before we get a chance to shoot up the hill and chuck that in. Job. Hey. Oh, come here, uh -oh. and, and we'll just um, I'll just show you a few things. Okay. Uh, there was close. another one that was. Um, that one? Oh no, just when they come out, just take notice of which ones. Oh no, that one's all right. Come out. There's another one somewhere, but I guess I'll put it in at the moment. So, so this is the thing I made. That's made, awesome. Made the back piece, so. Look at that. Does a good job. And on a dewy morning, you can see your tracks. Yeah. Fabulous. Oh, so just stop looking out again. Stop and check. And, yeah. Oh, keep an eye. Good. Keep an eye on it. Yeah. Hi. Jenny's harrowing the front paddock. So, make things nice and tidy. Hey, about a cup. Good morning, darling. Ready for another break? So, these are the lighter condition hill use. We just uh, got them on this kale and plantain paddock. We're not pushing them at all, so therefore you see a bit of a fair bit of stuff still left on the ground. They'll go back and pick that, pick through that. Oh, excuse me, later on. But um, yeah, we're just gonna let them into this break. Let them pick this out for three or four more days and shift them on. Uh, yeah, the whole aim for these girls is not just to maintain them, it's to actually put condition on them. Um, so that's why we're treating them pretty kindly. Yeah, 
Here they are, making their way onto the crop over there. They'll be pretty happy in here. So one mob I didn't show you guys in the last video, which is the kind of farm update thing where we went around and just showed you all the different mobs. Uh, these first calving Angus heifers. So these girls all scanned in calf. Uh, they're up to weight, they're in good nick. So we're just gonna um, graze them through this paddock for the winter. Uh, yeah, first calving heifers, you wanna make sure they're not too fat going into calving. So we just kinda maintain them. If they're a good nick at, at mating, maintain them through winter. Uh, and then actually kind of restrict them while they're calving then make sure we've got some good tucker for them to go on to once they've calved because uh, dystochia getting stuck if is too fat it can be a real yeah, not a nice time so uh that, that they're doing good yeah so this is a paddock full of uh what's well, cock's foot real dry real dry knobby um exposed paddock up here so we planted cock's foot uh ryegrass clover yeah, so majority cocksfoot now, but perfect for these girls. Just break feed them and they can clean it up. Uh, you can see from here, let's make sure we can see from here. Yeah, the forestry blocks. So that's the cutover forestry that we harvested a couple of two or three years ago. So that's been sprayed out. And then the new one up here, that's that, that uh, big long face up there, and the new fence with the ewes to the left. So hill ewes in that paddock and some cull beef cows. And then, yeah, new fence for us to block up there. So things are dying pretty good, but uh, whether we get a chance to plant these blocks in uh, this winter, yeah, we'll just have to see what the forestry companies say about all that. Uh, and then, yeah, so update on kind of all that stuff. Uh, Hiwaki Kanoa, so the, in New Zealand we were looking at um, being charged for animals. Mm, uh, so like these girls here belching out methane and all that stuff but we weren't going to be compensated essentially for the sequestration so all the native we've got on this farm all the pine trees we grow things like that uh, so the government have just come out and they've scrapped that plan they're coming out with a working group to work out how we can work all around that uh, yeah very much in two minds about it all from a farming point of view, don't see the need, we don't need it, We're, we are carbon neutral here, uh, we sequest way more than what we emit, um, and then, but from a trade standpoint, everything we're hearing from overseas is all our customers want us to be showing like we're doing some sort of uh, benefit to the environment, to the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, so we'll just see where all that runs to. Um, yeah. Oh, this uh, that block there will be an ETS too, emissions trading scheme. So try and grab some value out of that, carbon credits and bits and pieces. Uh, these two cutover blocks we can't put in there because they've already been harvested, and then of course uh, they've already been planted. This is second or third rotation, and then the one up by the hill house there as well. We'll uh, put an ETS. So these girls are happy. On to the next one. So while I was up here in this paddock, I thought I'd explain uh, this pond. This pond is the only water we've got in this paddock. Uh, reticulated water doesn't come kind of this far up from the bottom side of the farm. Doesn't come down the hills up there. The new scheme doesn't come down from the airstrip. So this, pot, this paddock here has got a creek in it. That one there has got a creek and a pond. This one here has just got a pond. But this was completely dry over summer, so I came in here cleaned it out with the digger, built this bank up again, a little stock walk around here and eroded away. And then we've got our wee uh, overflow pipe just here. So it's nearly, it's nearly up to here. Just clean it out a bit. It's nearly, nearly up to the overflow, which is good. Um, so once those heifers kind of, they can come in here and once I break fence them this far, they can come in here and uh, coming down and drinking out of this pond. Here we go. But at this stage, they've got to walk down on the other side of this paddock, down into another paddock to a trough. It's, uh, it's filling up nicely. And it just seeps out of the hill just through here. So, morning, girls. Ready for another break of grass? So just here with the calves. Another break of grass for these guys. 
another hay bale, and uh, yeah, continue their wintering. God, you look so very hungry. Come on. So just beside the paddock, uh, beside on the roadside, uh, when it was dry, we got this kind of one hectare triangle in here that is a bit wet, bit boggy, full of gorse and hawthorn trees and whatnot. So this part here was an area where if you did put stock in here, that all ewes would come into here and get stuck in a big seep, soak hole thing. So um, got in here with a digger, thought perfect place for a bit of a duck pond. Um, and it'll work as a bit of a sediment trap too. So this creek comes out of the trees up there, it's quite silty. So dug this out, had a bit of rain, it's all filled up now, it's looking really good. The other reason to come through all here was uh, the paddock over this side. We got um, did a bunch of work when we came here with uh, an overflow. So um, it's all these drains like the the Nova flows would drain, but the um, water wouldn't go anywhere because it just it, it was just stuck in this area here. So came through here, cleaned all this out, yeah, hooked a few trees out that were hanging over the road. So I'll just go and have a look and uh, see if these Nova flows are flowing at all with the uh, kind of the rain we've had over the last few days. There you go, that one is. I'm doing perfect, flying down the drain. Nice, we'll just, uh, might just scoop a bit of stuff away from there. So that one there is flying well. What I found, if you don't keep Nova flows or the pot drainage pipes clear at the bottom end, they silt up, and then it's a heck of a job to try and get them unclean, uh, cleaned out. So if you can keep them clear, keep the water flying, they're all pretty good. We'll go and check the other one. So this is the second one that's flowing, flowing pretty well for, uh, for being quite dry uh, up till now. But have a look in the paddock over there. I don't know if you can see that green line running through there. That's where the pipe goes. But that's all to do with the uh, aeration of the soil and the profile. So it's incredible what a bit of what a bit of um, aeration does in a kind of boggy, wet, wettish paddock. Oh, I'll try not to get bogged myself. So yeah, and then it just runs down onto the roadside, on the roadside creek and out. So. All working pretty good. Happy with that. Whoa, look at that. That's some good stuff coming out of there. Well, we got our setup again. The water blaster blew up. <laughs> Completely buggered. So uh, we've got the pump we're using out the back. Just trying to clear some of these nova flows, get this paddock. This is one of the paddocks I wouldn't mind working up to hill paddock, but it's very wet down the bottom, so these Nova flows need to be uh, working properly. Right, we're just letting that drain. <sighs> as far as I can get it up there for now. All right, I put a 900 odd litres in that one. Um, got as far as we can. So threaded the hose into the next one up the hill as far as I can there. So we'll go and fill up, give that one a crack as long as I can get up here. <laughs> on to the next one, filled up. So uh, we'll see how we get on here. Filling, filling out of the 5,000 litre tank we set up to fill the sprayers, pretty quick. A couple of minutes and we'll be back into it again. There's three tank fulls for today, we might call it here. Uh, we're struggling to get up the hill now, make a bit of a mess. So we'll uh, come back and revisit this another day. Still got to shoot down to the lease block and uh, feed the ewes, take them off the crop. Hey time boys. So just while I wait for Georgia to get back from school, she might want to come down to the lease block with me in the tractor. We got all these uh, Lombardi poplar poles we got given. 
So I'm just gonna, got the chainsaw, just gonna put a spike on the bottom, help me drive them in, and then you got some water there, soak them in water, ready for, Aiden can give me a hand tomorrow when he comes. So we'll uh, get to chopping. So we've got 20 there. Yeah, that should, uh, should keep us busy for a couple of hours tomorrow. We'll get them planted, but yeah, soak overnight. So while I got you guys here, might, you might as well ask you, uh, those of you that ride motorbikes, what's the TTR 110 or the CRF 110, the clutchless ones like? So the ones that don't have a clutch, uh, automatic bikes. So George has just been riding this, I think it's an 80, 70, CRF, CRF 70. Uh, and yeah, just getting used to that, but she's a little bit big for that, so I don't want to go, we're just borrowing that one. Don't want to go and borrow a bike that size when she'll grow out of it. it needs to be the step up so just looking at those ones yeah flick it in the comment if you ride one all right down here at the lease block got me bale of baler john so we're just poking it out uh for these ewes down here so i've got to run them off the crop but man these ewes are doing my head in they um oh some of them just push out no matter where so i've got to go and get the ones and from the pushed out of their break into the next crop paddock on the side. Ugh, can't wait to cull 300 of these buggers and get rid of them. It'll be the pushy ones, that's for sure. So right, this is where they've gotten under. <laughs> Pushed under there. So yeah, rusted out bottom wire. We'll have to come and fix it up tomorrow. Uh, how are we going to fix it up? How are we going to stop them pushing under the rest of all this? Um, hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Um, hmm. Have to think about that. Come on, girls, off you hop. You're done for the day. So it's the next day, sitting here, we're getting our wool sold today, so looking at uh, Bidder, Legend of Rights and this wool saying it was selling online. Uh, ours has already been sold and I missed it. <laughs> um, but some of the prices are pretty good. It's like 25 micron, $3.53. But anything strong world, oh that one's not too bad, 42 micron, uh, 321, anything over three dollars clean, not too bad for this kind of market, yeah, still tough going. So down here at Lease Block, got these ewes back on the crop, uh, fixed the fence, fixed the hole they were getting in through, uh, through yesterday, so hopefully that, that holds, yeah, new break. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've got Aiden here just down there helping me put another fence up and uh, get ready for tomorrow. So, new brake up, all electrified. Second brake up, ready for tomorrow. And hopefully, they stay in here. We'll find out in a couple of hours' time when we come down to feed and baleage. So, Traced in here with our upgraded screen, aiding on the tools. We'll uh, put this back in the creek and we'll all be tickety boo, hopefully. So, pretty simple. This goes in there. Right, so that should work. It's all uh, excess water flying out the bottom there. Put our pipe joined up, we might just chuck some more stuff on that pipe. Um, but yeah, we'll go and check uh, we'll go and check the tote halfway down the scheme, make sure it's flying into there. So got it all up and running, water's running in. Just cleaned it out, so cleaned some silt out of the sediment trap. Um, yeah, we'll let that fill up. And I'll monitor my Gallagher app on my phone to see the tank rise, hopefully. So, 
It's cold enough up here, it's your home. We've got Aiden on the job. Uh, doing a pilot hole for the next pole. So we made this tool, just like what we used last year from Ecan, but um, this is one I found made myself, but it's pretty heavy. It's, uh, it might be a bit too heavy. <laughs> so we'll see, we, we might end up chopping some, some bits off it, but yeah, so we do a pilot hole and then uh, put the pole in, give it a bash. Dry, really, underneath here. Right, so we don't have sleeves for these ones either at the moment, but um, something we can look at later. Lombardi poplar poles, uh, these ones, yeah, the ones we just sourced ourselves. On to the next one. So the last pole for today, we've done two, three, four, about 10, 11, 12, something like that. I think Aiden's got the hang of it. Good physical job before rugby practice. <laughs> it's very soft under there. Right. So we might now might not even be have to use the spike on that thing. Yeah. We'll just use the crowbar hole. Yeah. Yep, that will work. Cut that here, and I'll, I'll connect the camera to it. Say, yeah. uh, planting them. You can people said that yeah. After you've done it like that, you do a couple of things like this on that pill side, just like that. 
so the water can flow downhill and into the where you've got your pole. Like that. So I don't know. I don't know how much difference that makes. Yeah. Get that water in. So I don't have um, shields for these at the moment. I might look at grabbing some of them later because they, yeah, the ones that came from council will have the, where are they? Oh, like that, over there. The um, plastic sheaths go over them, but yeah, both sides of this creek, just down here, come around the corner, one up there, yeah, it'll be good. Should make a difference, hold things together and uh, provide a bit of shade and shelter for the stock. So Aiden's gone home, went and picked Georgia up, but I reckon I've cracked this uh, an overflow. Look at this. Amount of water pouring out of there. I ran out of water and then disconnected it and just tried to keep poking this hose up. But it's stonking out of there now. And it's just all silt. Horrible stuff, so I'll try and get this hose all the way through to there and then pull it out and uh, yeah just let it drain so that there's going pretty good happy with that hopefully just let that drain and touch wood it might even just drain this whole wet patch so uh the wool the wool auction that i was watching this morning we uh we sold it for oh, all three three lines so lamb's wool hoggets wool ewe wool for just over three dollars a kilo greasy ah uh, not <laughs> i wish three dollars a kilo clean um not great better than what we've got in the past but yeah hey <laughs> that's the wool story at the moment it's still pretty bad but uh yeah right we'll leave this video here thanks again to aiden for your help today and uh we'll see you guys in the next video bye you jisper you haven't had much work recently have you no yard work no